Hi Docs, this is Dr. Yasmin Haseeb and I welcome you all to our Royal Doc Line. We are going to discuss about another addition of the guideline which is about the Green Top Guideline number 31 by the RCOG. The name is Investigation and Management of Small for Gestational Age Fetus. This is the second edition of this guideline and which was published in 2014, the second edition. Let's go through this. The layout will be the definition, risk assessment, screening, diagnosis and the management. The definition of the SGS small for gestational age birth is defined as an estimated fetal weight or abdominal circumference which is less than 10 centile and the severe SGA as an estimated fetal weight or abdominal circumference less than 3rd centile. This is very important. Just note that this is a fetal weight and abdominal circumference. Here is the appendix 2 and this is the screening for SGA fetuses. This part is very very important and uh, appendix 2 is very important. We always do the risk assessment and booking of each and every patient in the first trimester. There are the minor risk factors and the major risk factors. The minor risk factors include maternal age equal to more than 35, IVF singleton pregnancy, nulliparity, BMI less than 20, BMI 25 to 34.9, smoker 1 to 10 cigarettes per day, low fruit intake pre-pregnancy, previous pre-eclampsia, pregnancy interval less than 6 months, pregnancy interval more than or equal to 60 months. So 3 or more. Then we will go on to the second step. Let's go on to the major risk factors later on but if there are three or more then you have to reassess at 20 weeks and if three or more persist then the uterine artery doppler at 20 to 24 weeks if it is normal then you have to repeat the doppler artery in third trimester if abnormal then it will go on with the major risk factors Let's move on to the major risk factors. Maternal age more than 40. Here it was 30. It is 40. Smoker equal to more than 11. Here it was 1 to 10. Note down. Paternal small for gestational age, cocaine, daily vigorous exercise, previous SGA baby, previous stillbirth, maternal SGA, chronic hypertension, diabetes with vascular diseases, renal impairment, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, heavy bleeding similar to menstruation, and pregnancy-associated plasma protein A, which is less than 0.4 multiples of the median, or the women which are unsuitable for the monitoring of growth by symphysiofundal height measurement, for example, the large fibroids, BMI more than 35. Even if one risk factor is there, then you have to consider the aspirin at less than 16 weeks if the risk factor for preeclampsia is also there. So here you have to go for the reassessment at 20 weeks in which P uh, Papa A less than 0.4 and uh, multiples of the median is a major risk factor. Fetal echogenic bowel is also a major risk factor at 20 weeks scan. So if one risk factor is there, you have to go with the serial assessment of the fetal size, umbilical artery Doppler from 26 to 28 weeks. This time is very important. Then reassessment during the third trimester, institute the serial assessment of fetal size and umbilical artery Doppler if develops severe pregnancy-induced hypertension, preeclampsia, unexplained antipartum hemorrhage or abruption. So this all table, all this appendix is very important. You will get many questions from here. They can give you the small questions in the form of uh, different cases. What is the optimal method and the frequency of fetal surveillance in a SGA infant and what is or are the optimal test to time the delivery? Umbilical artery Doppler, cardiotocography, AFI, and they should be by the single deepest vertical pocket. Note down. This is very important. Biophysical profile, MCA, middle cerebral artery Doppler, ductus venosus, umbilical artery Doppler for the preterm fetuses. So note down, DV and umbilical artery Doppler, they are the preterm uh, fetuses. Here, the appendix 3 is again very important. In this guideline, these two appendices, that is appendix 2 and appendix 3, are the most important. So here, if you go, if you see that the symphysiofundal height is less than 10th customized centile, 
or there are the serial measurements they are indicating the fetal growth restriction or the patient there is a high risk of the SGA fetus is neonate based upon the history biochemistry or uterine artery doppler then what you need to do you do the fetal biometry with the help of AC and estimated fetal weight less than 10 centile then you start doing the serial measurement indicative of FGR then the uterine artery doppler is normal repeat the ultrasound fortnightly what you will see again the abdominal circumference and weight of the baby and also you will do the uterine artery uh, umbilical artery doppler mca doppler after 32 weeks and here you time the delivery you will offer delivery by 37 weeks with the involvement of the senior clinician recommend by 37 note the word offer and recommend consider the delivery more than 34 weeks if static growth at least for three weeks Recommend the steroids according to the RCOG guideline if the patient is going for cesarean. If the umbilical artery shows fertility index or the resistance index more than two standard deviation but end diastolic flow is present, then you repeat the scan weekly, the same thing, and twice weekly, the umbilical artery doppler and the delivery should be by 37. Consider the steroids if uh, it is being delivered by cesarean. Consider the delivery more than 34 weeks if the growth is not there for more than three weeks. Recommend the steroids according to the guideline of the RCOG. If anything becomes abnormal like the absent or reverse end diastolic flow, then you have to refer the patient to the fetal medicine specialist for their opinion. Here you will come on to for the same thing that is ultrasound weekly, but however, daily umbilical artery doppler and the ductus venosus doppler if the baby is preterm and the computerized CTG recommend the delivery here 32 weeks after the steroid if the abnormal ductus venosus or the computerized CTG provided equal to more than 24 weeks and the estimated weight is 500 gram of the baby again see the word recommend recommend the delivery by 32 weeks in these cases with the steroids consider the delivery 30 to 32 weeks even when the ductus venosus is normal so these are the case scenarios which you can get in any form summary the definition is important risk assessment is important ultrasound doppler studies are the backbone and you have to memorize by heart the algorithm and it is very important from the mrcog part 3 exam point of view as well so if you like our videos and five minutes guideline series please give the thumbs up share it with your friends and give us your feedback how the things are if you want some special or some important guideline which you feel is difficult i can make the five minutes guideline on that and as a priority so let me know about your feedback and i wish you good luck in your exam thank you so much